back BC Kids and it is a new day in our page turner world. And for the last couple of weeks, we've been taking our adventures through our imagination to all these different lands and planets and really awesome fun things. And we've talked about some pretty important ideas. Now we've been talking about Jesus's ministry and Jesus teaches with parables, which is one of my favorite styles of stories. Now a parable is a story that teaches us a lesson by using a pretend situation. And our parable today actually involves a tree. So let me go get my tree. Uh, okay, here we go. Hang on. It's good. All right. I want it on this side. Oh, okay. Here we go. Whew. <sighs> cool, huh? Now, if you know anything about plants and gardening, that everything comes from seeds and then they grow into these really cool plants. I've been really into planting and gardening lately. And it's been really cool to see how when I plant a seed or I plant a small little plant that with soil and sunlight and water, it grows into this beautiful thing. But there are also some other important lessons to learn about when we grow things. And um, I'm just wondering if maybe you could help me. Okay, well, I know that some things grow on trees and some things don't grow on trees. So if I were to plant this paintbrush, would I get a paintbrush tree? If I were to plant this boat, would I get a boat tree? No? Oh, okay. Anchors away. <gasps> no, I don't want to plant a frog. Oh, lollipop tree, right? Yeah, I just dig a little hole in the dirt. I stuck this, no? But, cream soda flavored. All right, okay. Snowball tree, not in Florida, it's way too hot here. I know if I were to plant this slinky, wait, there it goes. <gasps> it's starting to grow. Hang on. Let me just pull it. Uh, uh. Whew. Okay, so I didn't really plant a slinky tree, right? So maybe if you could grab a piece of paper, you could draw your own tree and fill it with the craziest things that you can imagine, right? Now, when God sees us, he sees us as maybe a little seed that needs to be planted and we need to have a little bit of soil and sand and some nurturing and some time to grow, right? Well, let's get started with some music and it's my favorite song, Ask, Seek, Knock. And then I want us to go and grab our Bibles because we're going to the book of Luke. It says to me, it tells me that I'm never ever alone. I'm learning how J E S U S came down to us and gave his best. Without a doubt, the best friend you'll ever know. Our God knows exactly what I need. So I remember this. Let's go. When you ask, he cares. When you see, he's there.
knock, 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 knock. God opens up the door. When you ask, He cares. When you seek, He's there. When you knock, 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 God opens up the door. Now, like I said, today's story comes from the book of Luke, and it's a parable. A parable is a story that teaches us a lesson. So although our story is going to talk about a fig tree, which a fig tree is really cool. It's huge, got these huge leaves, and it grows awesome fruit, and it's delicious, and you can make a bunch of stuff with it. While it's talking about a fig tree, we actually know that Jesus is using this story to teach us a lesson about how to obey God and how much God loves us back. So while we're looking at the tree, I want you to actually think about what God is trying to tell us in this story and what Jesus is teaching the people. Now, Jesus has been teaching in his ministry for three years now. So he's gathered his disciples. He's begun his ministry. He's performing miracles. And for three years, he has been telling people, repent of your sin and believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. Okay. For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God for the wages of sin is death and that Jesus was going to give up his life. We're going to talk about Easter in a couple of weeks to pay that debt for us, that the wages, the cost of us sinning was to have blood paid for it. And Jesus was willing to pay that blood for us. So while Jesus is on earth, he's trying to tell people, he's trying to share these stories and these lessons and these parables. So let's turn to the book of Luke. We're going to chapter 13 and we're going to verses 6 through 9 and it's called the parable of the barren fig tree. And barren means that this fig tree was not producing any fruit. Wait a minute. That's not exactly what fig trees are supposed to do. Let's read what this is talking about. Then Jesus told this story. A man planted a fig tree in his garden and he came again and again to see if there was any fruit on it. But he was always disappointed. He's sad. Finally, he said to the gardener, the person that was taking care of these fig trees, I have waited three years. Wait, we know that number. Who else has been on earth teaching and preaching for three years? <gasps> that was Jesus too. So maybe this is important as well. Let's keep that in mind that Jesus has been teaching for three years and this man's been growing his tree for three years. And there hasn't been a single fig. This man's been working on this tree for three years and nothing has grown from it. Cut it down. It's just taking up space in the garden. And verse 8 tells us that the gardener answered and said, Sir, give it one more chance. Leave it one more year and I'll give it special attention and plenty of fertilizer. Now, if you guys know how plants grow, usually they need a little help. They need some water. They need to be in the right soil. They need some fresh air. And sometimes they like the sunshine. Sometimes they don't like the sunshine. Some are really picky. But Plants need to be taken care of. They need to be planted in a good spot and taken care of. So the gardener is promising that if they, the, the man gives it one more chance, just one more. After three years, just one more chance to see what happens to this fig tree. So the gardener continues in verse 9 and says, If we get figs next year, awesome, fine, wonderful. But if we don't, then you can cut it down. Okay, so what does this mean? Now, I've already kind of mentioned a little spoiler that this is a story from Jesus' teaching, so he's going around telling people about it, and he's telling people that this parable is a lesson about how we listen to God as well. So Jesus has been on teaching, going around teaching for three years, just like this man has been waiting three 
years for this fig tree to do something. Nothing is happening. Well, guess what? People also aren't listening to Jesus' ministry. Yeah, he's going around performing his miracle and people are believing, but people have also been listening to him for three years and have done nothing. But did Jesus give up on them? Well, the man wanted to give up on his fig tree, but someone stepped in. Someone said, wait a minute, I believe that this fig tree still has a purpose, that this fig tree can turn it around, that this fig tree can grow some figs. So guess what? We're gonna think of that gardener who was willing to put a little more time and effort, was gonna give it a little more love and nurturing, was gonna take care of it and give it one more chance. Well, that's what we're gonna think of as God. God steps in when we're sitting there having no figs grow on our trees when we haven't been making those right choices, when we've turned away from God, and when we're choosing sin over God's choices, God steps in and says, I'm still going to give you one more chance, and I'm going to give you a little extra love, and I'm going to give you a little extra fertilizer, and I'm going to let you grow a little bit more. And guess what? When we choose God, oh man, we're like the biggest fig tree ever with like the greatest harvest ever. We, our lives just overflow with abundance and grace. And we take that love and we then get to share it with other people. So now we sang Ask, Seek, Knock, which guess what? One of my favorites. And it comes from the Bible. Those very words that we sing in that song come straight out of the Bible. And it comes from Matthew 7. And it talks about actually praying to God, which is what we've been talking about a little bit as well when we talk about our Acts prayers. So it's verses 7 down to 11, and it says, Keep on asking, and you will receive what you ask for. Keep on seeking, and you will find it. And keep on knocking, and the door will be open to you. For everyone who is asking receives, and everyone who is seeking receives finds. And to everyone who is knocking, the door will be open. Guess what? I'm going to actually stop there because that's that's what I wanted to talk about mostly. When we're talking about asking, seeking, and knocking, it means that when we are not doing anything good and producing some good figs, when we're not making those right choices, God comes back and says, ask me because I'm going to answer you. Look for me, seek for me, and you're going to find me and knock on my door and I'm gonna open it for you because God is not gonna give up on us. So that is our big idea for this week, which I guess Mac is over there and he's holding an apple. We're gonna go see what Mac is doing over in our storybook corner. Hey guys, do you know what this is right in front of me? Well, it's an apple and right inside is a little seed called a pip. Now this tiny seed is planted in the ground and goes through a long process before it becomes a tree with apples. It takes a long time before a tree is big enough and strong enough to make fruit. It starts with a small seed and then a long time later becomes this apple. The same goes for us. It takes time for us to grow. Our big idea tells us that God is patient while we grow. Can you say that with me? God is patient while we grow. So guess what? I'm not very good at waiting. I get a little impatient, which means I'm not very calm and I get a little antsy and worked up and I start to fidget and wiggle. I'm not good at waiting. Even when I go to one of my favorite places, Disney, and I go wait in line for a ride, I'm usually tapping or waiting or I eat a little snack in the line or I'm reading a book or doing something on my phone because I just can't sit there and wait. I'm so bad at it. But do you know who's really good at it? <laughs> it's God. He is amazing at being patient and calm. And he wants us so very much that he is willing to wait and be kind to us, even when we're making crazy decisions or not growing any figs. But being patient as we grow and choose him and learn better and make better choices doesn't mean that God's just watching and waiting. 
And it doesn't mean that we just watch and wait. It doesn't mean that we just stand there as a tree. No. It means that we have that gardener who's giving us a little fertilizer, a little attention. He's pruning those dead branches. It means that making sure that we have room to grow, that there's nothing in our way because we're just following God. And that's what these verses are about. We're going to go to 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verses 12 and 13, and it's in the New Testament, so it's in the backs of your Bibles. And I'm going to read it right now. Are you ready? If you think that you are standing strong, well, that's what I would imagine a big tree is doing. Be careful not to fall. Okay, let's keep reading what verse 13 says. The temptations in your life are no different from what others experience. Now, we talked about temptations a couple weeks ago when Jesus was being tempted, right? And each time he said no, and he said no using Bible verses. All right, let's get back to these verses. And God is faithful. He will not allow the temptation to be more than you can stand. When you are tempted, he will show you a way out so that you can endure. Wait a minute. We know about temptation because we talked about Jesus being tempted, like I said, a couple weeks ago. And each time the devil tempted Jesus, and remember, Jesus was in the wilderness. He hadn't eaten for 40 days. He was fasting. He was probably very hungry, and he was off by himself. And I know when I'm getting a little hungry and I'm off by myself, I know I don't always make the right choices. But imagine going through this incredibly difficult life-size maze. You can't even see over the hedges, okay? We may stumble. We might struggle to find our way through, and we don't know where to go next. We have to go backwards and forwards and take a wrong turn and left and right, and it just brings it right back to the beginning, and it takes us longer and longer to get through it. Ah, it's frustrating as well, right? Now, growing and facing new challenges can feel a lot like that. I don't know where I'm going. I don't know what decision to make. I don't know how to respond to these temptations, and that's okay because the Bible just told us Jesus just told us, God just told us that the temptations we face, those desires to do something that we know is wrong, he's never going to give us more than we are able to say no to. Did you know that? That's what the Bible is telling us, that we are strong enough with God's power on our side. I don't know why I keep motioning to this tree back here. <laughs> that we are strong enough with God's power on our side to say no. And we have the example of Jesus in the wilderness being tempted by the devil, that evil one. Remember that. We're going to talk about our memory verse in just a minute. Being tempted that he said no. He was hungry for 40 days. He hadn't eaten anything. And the first thing the devil tempted him with ooh, was to turn some rocks into some bread. What do you think Jesus said? He said no. Because God doesn't give up on us when we mess up and when it takes us a really long time to find our way. And we know that because God didn't give up on Jesus. And Jesus is our example. That's what we should be striving for, to humble ourselves and to become Christ-like. So I want you to remember, when we make that stumble, when we mess up and just forget everything God's ever taught us, that God is patient while we are growing, while we're learning and He's ready for us. He's ready for us to go back and to apologize and to trust on him. There are so many amazing verses in the Bible that I want you guys to just remember in those terms, in those times when we're struggling is God is a light to our path. God is never going to give us more than we can handle or be tempted. And God, we are never going to be taken out of God's hand. When we place our trust in him, when we give him our life, when we choose to accept his gift of salvation, he puts us right into the palm of his hand. And nothing can ever take us out of it. Oh, I just love that. I just love that we can be strong and courageous and that we can do all things through Christ who gives us strength. It's, I just love it. It's just the best feeling ever to know that I'm not fighting alone. I'm not being strong by myself. God's strength is right there with me. So, since we're talking about stories, I just thought maybe we'd finish with a few more fun things to talk about. So think about some of your favorite stories. I have so many. <laughs> now, if every single story ended like this, once upon a time, there was a hero, there was a big problem, the hero defeated the problem, the end. Well, I could read like 50,000 times more stories than I do now. It would be so quickly, the hero just got to the end. 
it would be kind of boring, right? Reading about their struggles and their challenges, what they choose, the strength that they use to fight, to make the right choice, to choose to do good, well, that's what makes the story kind of interesting and we get excited about it. We want to go and watch it. We want to see that hero be strong and courageous. And it makes the ending when they, you know, defeat the evil so much better, right? It's exciting because we've been rooting for them and encouraging them along the way. Now, God is patient while we are growing and choosing him. So we need to learn to be patient with ourselves and with others too. We know through our stories and through our Bible story that it's a long road to get to the finish, right? And we have challenges that we face. There are hard things that we're going to have to see in our lives and do in our lives and say in our lives. And guess what? God's right there alongside of us. Guess what? He's, he's leading the path. He's got a light. Why are we following him? Seems like a great way to me. So what is one way that you can be patient with yourself? That means that when you mess up or you make a mistake, instead of getting angry and anxious about it, we know that we can be calm, we can be patient, we can give ourselves a little grace because we know that the God of the universe gives us a lot of grace when we mess up. So how can you be more patient with your friends and your family this week? Maybe when you know they're messing up too, you can be a little kinder as well because the love that we give out is the love that comes from God and God loves us a whole lot. How can you be a little more patient with complete strangers? This is something that I'm going to work on really hard this coming week. I'm going to be more patient with complete strangers because I want them to see God in me. And I know when I lose my temper and I'm not very nice, they're not seeing God. They're seeing my sin. So having patience is one of the best ways that we can show God how thankful we are that he is also patient with us, right? Now, I don't know if you've been practicing, but I have 2 Thessalonians chapter 3, verse 3 tells us, but the Lord is faithful and he will strengthen you and protect you from the evil one. So can you do it with me? But the Lord is faithful and he will strengthen you and protect you from the evil one. I did it. Did you do it? Okay. Let's do it a little slower this time. But the Lord is faithful. And he will, will strengthen you and protect you from the evil one second thessalonians three three or you can say second t three three because i know that Thess thessalonians is a hard word i was talking to my dad this week about thessalonica i still can't say it it's the town where the thessalonians live town area city country grouping village i'm gonna look that up hang on it's thessalonica and it was a city See, sometimes even I don't know the answers, but I know exactly where to go. Right to the Bible, and it's Thessalonians, and Paul's writing letters to encourage them how to be patient with themselves, how to do better, how to obey God, and how to grow. Not figs, but you know, to grow and mature and, and to obey God, okay? So, but the Lord is faithful, and he will strengthen you and protect you from the evil one, just like we've been talking about temptations and being patient and to choose God instead of choosing our sin. Now, I hope you guys have a wonderful week. Mac, I'm so glad that apple, I'm going to remember that. It's going to take some time for me to grow, but God's right there. Guess what? He's giving me a little extra love as my fertilizer and a little extra sunshine as my friends and family and a little bit extra water as the people around me that help me grow as well. And I know that I can go right to his word. I can go to the Bible to learn more. I can go right to church to learn more. And I can go right to my prayer and talk to God directly. And speaking of prayer, da -dun -dun, we're going to pray right now. Um, will you join me as we close in a word of prayer? Heavenly Father, I thank you for being patient with us, that you are patient and kind and always there. You are a rock in our lives, Lord, solid and strong and immovable. You are right there. And we are so very grateful that like a good gardener, you prepare and you work the soil around us. You give us extra love and joy and peace and you grow us to be strong. And even when we make mistakes and we mess up, Lord, that we choose the desire to sin over the desire to follow you, you are right there 
to prune us back, to make us strong, to give us exactly what we need, to give us the strength to say no to temptations, Lord. And you give us the example of your son, Jesus Christ, and his ministry on earth and these parables and these stories in the Bible, Lord, that we know exactly, exactly how to face these difficult times because you have prepared it for us. Help us to be more like you, to grow in our patience and our love, with ourselves and with others in our lives, Lord. Heavenly Father, I just thank you for these families. God, I thank you for this time to worship with one another. It is a gift above all to join together with believers and just sing your praises, Heavenly Father, to grow closer to one another, to worship and praise you. I thank you for this facility and Lord, the church family that just gathers here in your goodness and your grace, Heavenly Father. It is a beautiful thing to witness and your presence indwells in this place because of these people. I ask that we continue to reach this community, that we can be your hands and feet, Lord. It is our desire to share your light, that we are not alone, but we are helping these other trees to grow and to flourish and to bear fruit. I ask that you give us the peace that passes understanding to be strong and courageous and that with your strength we can do anything. In your holy and precious name I pray, amen. Now, we already read these verses from 1 Corinthians, but I especially want you to remember God is faithful and he will not allow the temptation to be more than you can stand. So what you're facing, what you have in your life is nothing more than what you can handle with God on your side. I hope you guys have a wonderful rest of the week. If you guys need anything, you want to come chat, you want to come say hey, you want to come worship with us, we're here Sunday mornings at 9.30 on, at First Baptist of the Land. We're right here, and I'd love to see you guys. So I hope you have a wonderful week, and I will see you later. Bye-bye.